Let me just say, listen, I'm, while I have been critical of President Donald Trump, mm. I am 100 percent with him on this. OK, first off, the U.N. is a joke. OK, yeah, we shouldn't be course. in it. It's terrible. Yep. Even yep. in theory, it's ridiculous. NATO, on the other hand, is a great idea. OK, after World War II, countries came together to try and make sure something like that never happened again. They needed mm. a counter threat to the Soviet yeah. Union. And mm. unlike the silly, completely invalid U.N., NATO has only developed into a joke because of the execution. It's the execution <laughs> of NATO. NATO in theory is great, but what they're doing is, and then it's like the, the French too. We have a problem with the, I mean, yeah, of course, of course we have a problem with the French in NATO. Is anyone surprised that France is a problem of international defense? They're the only soldiers who go into battle with a standard issue, individual white flag. Like you guys, you guys have Ready a canteen. Oh they have a white, they, you know the gun in the in the uh, cartoons? Right. They go, and a little white flag? That's the French. <laughs> That's exactly. invented. I thought effect. that was Wiley Coyote. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was Jean Pierre. <laughs> a bloated bureaucracy, riddled with wet red tape, and it's entirely ineffective. See, I'm still thinking about uh, I'm still thinking about Wiley Coyote and That's wed true. tape hunting uh, wabbit. No, wabbit. wabbit. I'm hunting wabbit Frenchman. <laughs> <laughs> it is terrible. It, won't take it long. is fat and sloppy. That's the perfect descriptor for NATO. And so, of course, you have Trevor Noah. He tries to paint Donald Trump as a hypocrite. And he, he doesn't tell you though that. Trump and Macron have completely different reasons. <laughs> Macron's point of view here is he's upset because the United States isn't policing Syria as, as much as they'd want us to. Yeah. What happened to we need to get out of other countries? This always right, surprises right. me. Every it's single like, time. You're an, em you're an evil empire. Okay, yeah. but we want you to come in and we want you to <laughs> evil empire us can a little us, bit. Can you help us out with this? What, what, what are we? Are, we, are we an evil empire or are we policing the world? Hmm. It's one or the other yeah. because being an evil empire is profitable. You just take their stuff. <laughs> Policing the world is spending resources to help other countries, even if they can't benefit you. Yeah. Everyone wants a little bit more American policing. The people who shouldn't be wanting it are Americans. But I understand why in crap holes like Syria or France, they want our help. I get it. Yeah. I can't blame them for it, but it's not how we should dictate our policy. So since President Trump has moved to withdraw troops, remember, where's Code Pink? Yeah. Where's Code Pink? <laughs> We're in after Italy. We need to pull yeah. up. Donald Trump is the first president to actually start withdrawing kinda, troops. He didn't just announce it and say, set your date in the calendar, ISIS. Right. He just did it. <laughs> like Barack Obama wanted to do, but he's been withdrawing troops. France, they said that we're compromising their position in the region. So, so Macron, no. Macron is particularly upset that Trump doesn't share the European Union's vision, right? And he said that they were, they're facing the brain death of NATO because of differences in vision. Okay. France is demanding that the United States adopt the European Union's vision of NATO, and that if they don't, they say it's hypocritical. The truth is, <laughs> Donald Trump has a point. Okay, yeah. yes, he may have exaggerated when he said that most ISIS fighters come from Europe, but Macron was certainly wrong when he said that European fighters account for a tiny percentage. The truth, okay, is somewhere in the middle. Yeah. You, you know, like the surrounded surrendering Frenchmen. They're usually in the middle, <laughs> surrounded by a firing squad. Yes. So, <laughs> or running away. Yes, yeah, running yeah. away. But they can't. That's why you form the circle. Right. Oh, you form the you circle and you go, fight, it's a fight, move. fight, fight, fight. <laughs> and they go, I don't know what this means, this fight. <laughs> what is this fight? What? I, uh, we are p So. <laughs> yeah, you will sound Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we need the wall. <laughs> So out of 10,000, to keep me out, to keep my impressions up, pretty, out yeah, of 10,000, here's the number, out of 10,000 ISIS prisoners, 10,000 uh, ISIS prisoners in Syria, 2,000 are foreign fighters. Yeah. Almost 1,000 of those are known, at least known right now, to be from Europe. Holy crap. Oh, Think oh, about geez. this for a second. Do you guys remember Jihadi John? Yeah. Yeah. Remember how big of a deal that was? Yeah. Jihadi John, it was a net, like they were going to hang him for treason. That was one guy. <laughs> that was one guy. Right? We found yeah. out that one guy from the United States went to go fight for the enemy. It was national news. It was bigger than Trump's yeah. impeachment. Right. They have, this is just another day in the, it's just another Tuesday right. for France. <laughs> Imagine a thousand Jihadi Johns. Yeah. Wow. Think about that. And by the okay. way, who leads all of Europe in ISIS recruits? Hmm. Take, a, take a guess. Take a guess. Take a guess. Take a guess. I wish we had uh, some accordion music or what's the hmm. French music? I don't know what. It, it's France. I, maybe I should. <laughs> I should have, okay, here. Hold, hold on a second. I'll give you a hint. Oh. <laughs> 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 you did Just it. blur it. You Just did blur it. it. They've had 1,900 French nationals Jesus. join ISIS. Yeah. That's more than twice that of any other European nation. It's like an ISIS factory. Wow. And Trevor Noah sees it as like, look, Macron's really confident. You have 1,900 terrorist ass from yeah, your country. 
You have no leg to stand on because it's your stool's probably been blown up. I'm surprised that many Frenchmen want to fight. I it's don't crazy. think that anyone with a French passport should make it through TSA. That's <laughs> all the question. Uh, put so them on the ban. You know, also ignore Muslim ban. Just a French ban. How about that? I don't even think that we should have sur la table, okay? <laughs> it's just William Sonoma with an even more pretty snooty pretty attitude. Yeah, no, much. no, I don't need your new Harry O'Han grinder, you <laughs> like trying to make a buck. By the way, on top of this, uh, Fr France are refusing to put their own ISIS fighters on trial. Okay, they demand yeah. that other countries take care of the terrorists, and then they publicly oppose it when those same countries sentence them to death for terrorism. As a percentage of GDP, we lead all other countries. Okay, yes. and almost none of the countries even manage to meet NATO's two percent threshold. I think only the UK does. France is at one point eight percent, while we're over three point four percent. And in total, the United States spends more on NATO than all other. Nations combined. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. We have Mexico and Canada. We can leave the rest of the crap to you guys if you want to take I'm care. a little confused <laughs> as to what fair share means. Yes. I want you guys to I help definition. define it for me. No, wait, you did. 2%. And you f that up. <laughs> yeah, let it out. I love this. Let it out, Stephen. <laughs> God, I love this guy. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I, I'm sorry, but I get so upset about it. When you think about it, it's like, yeah. okay, after World War II, all right, how about, how about we all pitch in 2%, which, by the way, is like saying, hey, United States, you really... Si you really saved our ass back there in World War II. So we're all going to say 2% because we know that you're really going to be contributing more than everyone, but we'll at least all contribute 2%. Yeah. Then we start contributing 3, 4, 5%. We're like, can you do the 2? F*** you! What are we? I just, it is remarkable right. to me how entitled the rest of the world is, particularly Europe. All of the European victims, by the way, thoughts and prayers go out to the family. So I'm not saying this to denigrate them at all. What I actually think that it's a travesty. All of the European victims from brutal terrorist massacres, they are effectively human sacrifices at the altar of political correctness. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening in Europe. And a big part of that is because they don't want to pay their fair share. The reason that NATO exists to get into the history after World War II, Europe said, we need to make sure this doesn't happen again. And of course they wondered, well, what do we have to do to get the US on board? Because they're the ones who are going to make a difference. And that's when they said, hey, United States, can we have like an alliance? Can we have an agreement? And we know we're not as big as you, but can you give us a, a hand? So. This was the agreement, right? That these people would pay certain percentages and so would we. But they aren't. They aren't upholding their end of the bargain and they haven't been for quite some time. Many of them for decades. The United States is entirely blameless with regards to NATO. We are overperforming, we are over contributing, and we are saving more lives. And, and, and while more of the citizens, by the way, from these other countries, all the while, more of their citizens are converting to terrorist Islam and committing acts, of, I wouldn't say converting to Islam and committing acts of terrorism, and I know people get mad about that, they but do. you know what? I don't yeah. really care. They're one and the same <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at this point. Terrorist I mean, Islam, is not, not all, of course not all Muslims are terrorists, but all right. terrorists. It's kind of like black and bad credit, right? <laughs> <laughs> It's true. I don't know what you're talking about. Cultural differences. <laughs> it's true. I'm out credit. of touch. <laughs> so they're committing terrorist attacks on their own citizens in their own countries, and now they're even going to other countries like Syria to commit terrorism abroad. But st France, they still can't be troubled to spend their 2% on the problem. Here's my question. Whatever happened to the wealthy paying their fair share? Whatever happened the top 1%? We hear that all the time, right? Wouldn't governments with trillions of dollars qualify? Can you guys open the coffers a little bit and let's remove the fact that there are multi-billion and multi-trillion dollar governments from Europe and they're not paying their fair share as viewed through the lens of identity politics. I, I don't want France or Germany or Canada just to pay their fair share because they're rich and I want to take their money. It's not like some Bernie Sanders tax plan. I want them to pay what they promised to pay because it's their job. 